today I'll read from May, June, 2020 in time. And I'm gonna read, uh, it's by Urban Baxter. Could coronavirus be the judgment of God? For many of us, the coronavirus pandemic is an event like we have never experienced before. Because it's a disease with no vaccine or cure, because it spreads so swiftly and because it can result in death, the virus strikes fear into the hearts of people around the world. This leaves us with so many questions. Could this horrible pandemic be a judgment from God Almighty? Or is it merely a natural phenomenon? These are questions that all of us are wrestling with. Judgment from God. We have many instances in the Bible where God sent plagues upon mankind because of the wickedness of human beings. When God destroyed the world by flood in the days of Noah, the scripture says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6, 5. As a result, God destroyed all human beings from the face of the earth except for eight people. This was definitely a judgment from God. In the days of Abraham, there were two cities called Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 13, 13 says, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Because of this, God decided to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. One of the prominent sins that grieved God so much was the sin of homosexuality. The sin of of homosexuality bears the name of sodomy today as a result of the wickedness of Sodom God sent the prophet Jonah to preach to a great city called Nineveh because of the wickedness of the city was great Jonah was instructed to warn the people of Nineveh that after 40 days the city would be overthrown the people of Nineveh believed the warning from God so all of the people repented fasted and prayed because they repented and turned from their evil ways God granted forgiveness and did not destroy Nineveh these are just three examples in the Bible of God sending judgment upon the earth because of sin there are many more the question has to be asked could the coronavirus epidemic be a judgment sent from God what kind of actions could possibly result in God sending judgment upon the human race at this time? Revelation 21.8 gives a list of many things that will result in mankind receiving God's judgment in the future. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death what is the level of wicked wickedness in our world today the sin of sodomy the sin of sodomy for which God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah is embraced today anyone who dares speak against homosexuality is quickly labeled as homophobic the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 2015 that same-sex marriage was legal and accepted. President Obama even had the arrogance to light up our White House that night in the rainbow colors of the gay movement. Since that time, homosexuality is flaunted and celebrated. Yes, God said concerning the sin of homosexuality, if man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus 20.13 Would this level of wickedness be enough to provoke God to send a pandemic upon the world? The sin of fornication. Fornication is defined as consensual sexual intercourse between two persons not married to each other. In America and in much of the world, it has become commonplace for man and woman to live together without marriage. 
According to the 2010 census data, over 7.5 million unmarried couples live together in the United States, which translates into 15 million people. This is a whopping 138% increase since 1990. There is a time, there was a time when it was expected that a new bride would be a virgin. However, by 2010, just 5% of new brides were virgins. It is obvious that fornication is tacitly accepted as normal in our present society. However, just because human beings accept this level of immor immorality doesn't mean God accepts it. This New Testament scriptures emphatically state God's view toward fornication has not changed. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10 clearly expresses God's attitude toward fornication and many other sins. Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. While this passage uncompromisingly condemns sin in all of its categories, verse 11 goes on to declare that people can be changed by the power of Jesus Christ. The passage states, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians 6-11 the only power that can renovate a society that has slid into gross immorality is the power of Jesus Christ, the creator and savior of the world. 50 million abortions worldwide each year. According to the World Health Organization, every year in the world, there are an estimated 40 to 50 million abortions. This would equal approximately 2.35 billion babies killed since 1973 when the U.S. Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision made the procedure legal. Only the most hardened can ignore the killing of 50 million babies each year. Would the killing of 2.35 billion babies by abortion in the last 40 years be considered wickedness by God? With just the above three examples of rampant wickedness in our world, it is certainly possible God could choose to send judgment upon mankind at this present time. Is the coronavirus a fulfillment of Bible prophecy? It appears certain the coronavirus is a fulfillment of prophecies that are scheduled to occur as we approach the Battle of Armageddon and the return of Jesus to the earth. In the famous 24th chapter of Matthew, Jesus' disciples asked him, what would be the sign of his coming and the end of age, referring to the church age? Jesus replied in Matthew 24, 7 to 8, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Our world is continually experiencing all of these things. Jesus said, would happen as we near the second coming and the end of age. One of the things Jesus said would happen would be pestilences. The word pestilence means pandemic. The coronavirus is one of the world's worst pandemics the world has experienced in the last 100 years. We can safely say the present pandemic is fulfillment of one of the signs Jesus said would signal our approach to the end of age. Notice verse 8 says these things would be the beginning of sorrows. This leads us to our next question. Could the coronavirus be the end of the world? We can say with absolute certainty the present pandemic will not result in the end of the world. Notice verse 8 says the prophecy events are only the beginning of sorrows. The Bible is 
replete with many events that must yet occur in the future of mankind. What does the future hold? The Bible gives us many detailed prophecies concerning events of the future that most that must come to pass. Some of these prophecy events are as follows. <clears throat> A Palestinian Israeli peace agreement will be signed. This will launch a seven year period that will come up, culminate with the Battle of Armageddon and the physical return of Jesus to the earth. The Temple Mount in Israel will be placed under a sharing agreement for all religions. The Jews will build a temple on the Temple Mount. When the Jewish temple is completed, animal sacrifices will be instituted. Future catastrophic events will lead to the emergence of a system of world government. A very strong political leader will gain control of the world government. <clears throat> the United States and Israel will refuse to participate in the new system of global governance. Most of the world will adopt a cashless society. This will allow the governments to exercise unprecedented control over their citizens. The continual dispute over the status of Jerusalem will lead to the invasion of Israel by the international community. This will precipitate the Battle of Armageddon. Jesus will return to the earth and fight for the nation of Israel at Armageddon. Jesus will then establish his kingdom upon the earth. This will usher in 1,000 years of peace. Could the coronavirus ultimately benefit America? Revelation 9, 13 through 16 foretells a war that will destroy one third of mankind. The likelihood is high that America and China will be involved in this war. In the present pandemic crisis, America has found itself short on many supplies that are manufactured in China. We have realized that we need to bring all critical manufacturing back under America's control. It is possible that the coronavirus will serve as a wake-up call for America to set its house in order. If our leaders will heed this warning, then the present pandemic might turn out to be a blessing in disguise. Will the present crisis result in a spiritual awakening? We are hearing many spiritual leaders warning the coronavirus could be a judgment from God. We have all been made painfully aware of the fragility of life. There has been a renewal of God conscientiousness. President Trump designated March 15 as a day of prayer that God will lift the coronavirus curse from our nation and the world. In making his declaration, the president said, It is my great honor to declare Sunday, March 15, as a national prayer day of prayer. We are a country that throughout our history has looked to God for protection and strength in times like these. No matter where you may be, I encourage you to turn towards prayer in an act of faith. Together we will easily prevail. Judgment of God or not. I can't say with certainty whether the coronavirus is a judgment from God or not. We can say with certainty, however, we all need to humble ourselves, repent, and draw near to Him. Second Chronicles 7.14 tells us what to do. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land and that's it thank you for watching